A Ukrainian student who'd been in the UK for less than a week has admitted killing an 82-year-old man who was walking home from a mosque. Pavlo Lapshin also pleaded guilty to planting bombs at three mosques in the, in the Midlands. The bomb incidents came at a time of heightened racial tension following the death of Lee Rigby in Woolwich. Police say he acted alone and if he hadn't been caught would have gone on to commit further offences. Porrick O'Brien has this report. Pavlo Lapshin wanted to start a race war in the UK. He was 25, Ukrainian, a high achiever. Here he is after winning a top work placement at a software company in Birmingham. The chief executive of the company told me that Lapshin's CV was exemplary. He was super clever. The factory gave him accommodation inside. He had a room. He arrived in the UK on the 25th of April. On the 29th of April, just five days later, he had murdered Mohammed Salim. And all the while, bit by bit, his room inside this company was becoming a small bomb-making factory. Today, he pleaded guilty to the murder of Mohammed Salim. The 82-year-old was making his way home from the mosque. He walked that half mile every day through a community he was a pillar of. Lapshin decided that his race war would start here. He murdered Mr. Salim yards from his house, then ran away. Outside court, his daughters found it within themselves to acknowledge the waste of a young man's life, as well as that of their father's. For someone of such a young age to commit such a heinous murder, and he's looking at a pretty lengthy sentence, um, I just think it's such a pity that he's wasted his whole life for some personal hatred opinions that he has of a particular faith. After the murder of the bombing campaign, he pleaded guilty to planting three bombs outside three mosques across the West Midlands. June, his first bomb outside a mosque in Walsall, the white supremacist's sick joke to himself, putting the bomb in a children's lunch bag identical to this one. No one was injured. He stopped for a bottle of wine on the way home. The second bomb was stronger outside a mosque in Wolverhampton. Finally, a huge nail bomb at the Tipton Mosque was timed to go off for prayers at one o'clock. Because of Ramadan, they didn't start until two, so the nails ended up in branches of trees rather than limbs. That's modus operandi. What of motivation? Lapson's father, a university professor in the Ukraine, is mystified. I've got a lot of questions. First, I don't believe he killed anyone. I just can't believe this. Second, fascism. He never was involved in politics. OK, he may have been stressed. Something clicked and he got certain ideas. But then why did he try to blow up a mosque and not a synagogue? There's no logic. He admits, though, that his son was once fined when a chemical explosion went off in his flat. As white supremacist killers go, Lapshin is unusual. He didn't want the platform of a full trial. His racist world view is undeveloped. He says he was intending to uh, stir up racial hatred. He targeted them because he's white and they were non-white. He, he actually said he wanted to commit an act of terrorism. Um, that was coupled with um, things we found on, his, uh, found on his computer, although we couldn't find any evidence of him being a member of a group, and he actually was adamant he wasn't a member of a group. He was actually... Um, a, lone, a lone actor. This expert in the Ukrainian far right has studied Lapshin's online profile. First of all, he has a cover of the Turner Diaries written by the American neo-Nazi activist William Pierce. And that was a, a novel and a text used by the likes of Timothy McVeigh and Copeland before they exactly. cited that, didn't they? Exactly. Uh, there is also a text, a link to the text, uh, on the uh, uh, neo-Nazi National Socialist Underground uh, terrorist group in Germany. And the only surviving main member of this group is uh, Beata Zschäpe, who is now standing trial. The only victim of his war, Mohammed Salim. That night on this pavement, Lapshin didn't see the granddad or the dad or the person at the centre of this community's beating heart. He didn't see the progressive who insisted that his daughters be educated and sent to university. All he saw was an Asian with a beard. In his twisted world view, all he saw was the enemy. Men like Lapshin sometimes feed off the notoriety. The legacy of men like Mohammed Salim, something far more profound.